Hi, my name is Liz and I work at the Grand Rapids Public Library. Thank you for joining us for our Summer Reading Challenge event today. Summer Reading Challenge is generously supported by the Grand Rapids Public Library Foundation. And this time, we also have our friends at Blandford Nature Center helping us out. But first, before we start our story time, we need to say hello to each other. Are you ready? Our song is called Hello Friends, and I'm going to teach you some fun sign language to use while you're singing the song. Our first is hello, and it's like we're saluting, like that. Then our pointer fingers are friends, and they hug each other for hello. And then we say hello, and we tell time, too, in this song. Let's sing it together. Are you ready? Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Can you do that, too? Good job, everybody. Today we're learning about rabbits, or bunnies as some people call them. And we have a fun book called The Wonderful Habits of Rabbits. This is by Douglas Florian, and the illustrations are by Sonia Sanchez. The Wonderful Habits of Rabbits. It's a fun rhyme, isn't it? The habits of rabbits are many, not few, with plenty of things that they love to do. There's waking up early to see the sunrise and yawning at dawn while rubbing your eyes. There's leaping and creeping and digging up holes. There's frightening frog and discovering moles. Do you see the frog? It looks a little scared. In spring, there is smelling the fragrance of flowers. In summer, they're swimming and lazing for hours. There's playing with leaves when the autumn winds blow. In winter, there's building a rabbit of snow, a snow rabbit. Of course, there is hearing with great rabbit ears. Look how giant those ears are and finding lost things that were buried for years because rabbits burrow into the ground when they nest. There's hitching a ride on the back of your pop. One thing is for sure, he has the best hop. There's racing your cousins and sisters and brother. And when you get home, there's hugging your mother. There's chewing a carrot and biting a beat. Mm, that sounds good. And when there is music, they're thumping your feet. Can you thump your feet? Very nice. But as the sun sets, then there's going to bed. Stretching your arms oh, and stretching your head. One habit of rabbits that's not to be missed. Look, they're reading together is saying good night with a hug and a kiss. And that's the end of our book about rabbits. Parents, did you know that reading together encourages children to want to learn how to read? You can find a lot of fun books using our digital resources like Hoopla. Before I give you over to Blanford where they have some rabbits to show you, I have a fun closing rhyme called Funny Little Bunny. And you can use your hands you can use some rhythm sticks if you have them at home. Any kind of toy you want would work. And we go, funny little bunny goes hop, hop, hop. Funny little bunny, please stop, stop, stop. Wiggle your ears. Can you wiggle your ears? Crinkle your nose. Oh, can you do that? Mm, I, there we go, good job. Then wiggle, wiggle, wiggle right down to your toes. Good job, everybody. Thanks for watching, and here are our friends from Blandford Nature Center. This is our female domestic rabbit, Truffle. And the reason why Truffle lives at Blandford Nature Center, you've probably already noticed that the other animals you've met were wild animals, but this is a domestic animal. We have her, so that way we have an animal that folks like you, when you come to visit us, you can pet her, you can give her a couple smooches, 
But do you think our owls or our hawks or our kestrels like that? Not really. And so before living at Blanford Nature Center, Truffle actually had two other families. The first family was a family with children that she was originally gifted to them. And as we know, sometimes we lose interest of things after a while. And so maybe that just meant they weren't playing with her a lot, or perhaps she wasn't getting enough time out of her cage. And so that family gave her to their aunt. And their aunt pretty quickly thought, you know what, I'm not really interested in owning a rabbit. So her aunt called us and we were able to adopt Truffle as one of our education ambassadors. And yes, she is a domestic ambassador. But similar to the wild rabbits that we know live here in Michigan, our friends the Eastern Cottontail, Truffle has a lot of similar adaptations to them. She's got large ears for listening to the world around her. She can stick one up at a time if she needs to. She can rotate them forward or backward in order to change what she's listening to. She's got very large eyes on the side of her head. Because remember, eyes on the side run and hide. She is a prey animal. She is not a predator because she doesn't need to chase down plants that are already stationary. Eyes in front, born to hunt. So for humans, we were born to hunt if we so choose. Bobcats, born to hunt. Owls, born to hunt. But this small rabbit, is prey to all of those animals I just listed. So she's gonna wanna have these eyes on the side, quite large eyes, for her to see in front of and behind her to know when a predator is approaching her. She also has large springy back legs that tense down into place and then boing, releases the kinetic energy into a large rabbit leap. This girl can leap pretty far and sometimes pretty high. Now what we love to talk about with her besides all of her outer characteristics is an adaptation that you can't see right now. She has really sharp incisors. Our incisors are our front four teeth, two on top and two on bottom. Her incisors are very sharp. Think of incisors like scissors, incisors like scissors. She uses them, as do wild rabbits, to chew up all kinds of hard bodied fruits and vegetables. Like as I'm sure you've guessed, carrots. Rabbits do love carrots. But what happens in the wild in the winter when there aren't any fruits or vegetables growing and there aren't leaves on the trees or growing out of the ground? Rabbits will then in the winter turn to eating different sources of food like the bark off of trees, the buds off the end of branches, or small little sapling plants that are growing up out of the ground like maple saplings or oak saplings. And so they need those sharp incisor scissor-like teeth in order to snip at those woody plants. And what's really cool is think about in the winter, think about how big this girl is. She probably couldn't get very high to the bark of a tree. She might get at most two to three feet up, if that. But when the snow piles up as the winter goes on and the snow gets deeper and deeper, that gives the rabbits a brand new place to explore. Rabbits will stand on top of those snow piles and chew at new buds and new bark. But what about summertime, you're probably wondering. Don't forget about nesting season. In the springtime, those rabbits are building nests so that as the summer goes on and their babies are growing up, they're picking places where their babies can forage on their own, find those fruits and vegetables that are growing, those leaves, those small saplings of trees. And so what's really interesting is thinking about how mom protects her babies. I'm stroking truffle right now because as a domestic rabbit, she enjoys that. But wild rabbits, they don't like to be touched by humans because number one, we are scary predators. Number two, we have a very strong smell associated with us. And baby rabbits don't have a smell so that they don't attract predators. So when you find a wild baby rabbit, it's important to put it back. Now I hope that you've noticed that Truffle sits quite still and relaxed in my arms. Wild rabbits don't feel comfortable living with humans, which is why she's a perfect ambassador. Thank you guys so much for letting me introduce you to Truffle, our female domestic rabbit.